just to let you know that um, the audio problem might be resolved. So we are actually recording the service. We're not streaming it, but it will go out live. So just so you know that. Um, it won't go out live. It will go out uh, recorded afterwards or part of it. So. Um, right. Now, I need some volunteers. Apart from Scott. Apart from David at the, mo at the moment. Come on, I need, I need a, a couple of volunteers. Actually, I need four. Well, I mean, you know, I just, just, just to do something for me, help, help me out with something. I'm going to pick on some people in a minute. No, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pick you. Come, Imani. No. We've got one. Or was it, are you volunteering, Michelle? Ah, Michelle, Michelle and Ella, yeah. Yeah, that's one team, that's right. Right, one adult, one child then. Are you volunteering? Come on then, Amy. And we've, come on then, Laurie. Come on, Laurie. No, she's over there, that's all right. So you can stay that side, uh, Michelle and... Uh... Right, so I've got my four volunteers and a helper. We're here, this side, brilliant, okay, now, now do you want to see what, what's on these, are you wondering what's on these tables? Uh, some of you are disappointed now, aren't you? Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a nod to sort of fruit there, there's a bit of strawberry as well, uh, and there's a few, a few sweet things. So, now, effectively, we've got two teams. Okay, so I need a child at this side. So Lori, come here. This side, stand, stand facing that way. And Ella, come here. Stand this side. And then the adult, the other side. Uh, oh yeah, that's Michelle. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Amy, so you're this side. Right. Now this is this is a competition and a game at the same time. All right. So. So what, what I need you to do is you have to have one hand behind your back, right, like that. So one hand behind your back, and then your other hand is free, okay? All right? So the competition is going to be to see who can eat what's in the trays fastest. Okay? See who can eat it fastest. And you're playing against each other, and we'll see which team wins. And, and I want this side of the church to cheer for these guys, for Michelle. And can you try to cheer? No, that's work. That's horrible. Try again. Go again. Three, two, one. Cheer. No, not very good. Not very good. Let's see if this side can do better. Three, two, one. Cheer. They're better than you lot at cheering. I'm sorry. Definitely better. Right. So are you ready to cheer for your table? If we, if we do a five, four, three, two, one, eat. Okay. And you can count down with me. And then we can, we can start. There's something missing. I forgot. You've got to have, you've got to have cutlery, haven't you? You can't, you can't eat with your fingers. One for you. One for you. One for you. And one for you. Now, there's a rule about these. You've got, you've got to hold it past the red tape, the, the, the other end, okay? You've got to hold the end. You can't, your hand can't go beyond the red tape, okay? All right. So, are you ready? Are you ready now to do this? We're going to see who can eat, eat the quickest. Remember, you're a team, all right? So, we're going to see who can eat what's on their plates the quickest. Are you ready? Hmm? You ready? Hand behind your back. Are we ready to count? Five, four, three, two, one, eat.
Oh, yeah, you see. I've, I've, no, you, you've got to hold, you've got to hold before the red. Come on, cheer for your team. They're getting the idea here. There is only one way of doing this. How are we doing? <laughs> straight in, straight in. Come on, straight in. <laughs> I, knew that, I knew the big marshmallows would be a hit. Does anybody want to try doing a Malteser? Because <laughs> I reckon they're pretty much impossible. But, but there we go. Okay, well, I think, I think we, have, you, have you finished? Have you had enough? Have you had enough, of, enough food? Well, well done. Give them a round of applause. So in case you missed it, the only way of, of doing that was by feeding your partner. You couldn't feed yourself. We're going to um, continue uh, with our service. I need to remember what we're doing next. I think we're going into some some songs of, of worship, um, some songs of praise. We want to give God th- can continue to give God thanks for all that he provides for us. And while we go into this, this first song, um, you'll be able to bring up your offerings. Heather's just going to move a couple of tables a little bit, and you'll be able to bring up your food offerings as we sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
we thank you for your faithfulness to each one of us, Lord. And Lord, as you are faithful to us, we've been faithful this morning, Lord, and brought these uh, these um, these gifts, Lord God. We pray, Lord, that uh, that we are blessing to those that need them, Lord God. faithful one, Lord, and you never change. You 
I come before your throne of grace. I find rest in your presence and fullness of joy. In worship and wonder, I behold your face. Singing, what a faithful God. Sing it out. What a faithful God. to Jesus for his, his faithfulness just tell him how grateful you are of his love just just call out your praise now as we just stand in worship Lord, you are faithful. Thank, you. thank you Jesus that you are always faithful even when I am not thank you Lord Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank 
Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And take your seats a moment. We're going to watch um, another of the short little videos um, from Compassion. And this one is thinking about uh, some of you here. I say I know a lot of us here have, have sponsored children and maybe wondering what the impact of, of COVID-19 has been on the, the projects and, uh, and what they're doing during this time. And this short little video just gives us a bit of a, an idea about that. Thank you, Colin. Because of COVID-19, most children in Compassion's program have stopped gathering at child development centers. So, if children aren't gathering at centers, how are your contributions being used? It really depends on local laws and the child's exact needs. While children aren't coming to the church, the church is going to them. And this starts with staying connected. Church staff members are visiting children at home, checking in over social media, delivering Bible lessons over mobile devices, and even broadcasting radio messages. And by staying connected, we can understand and serve the specific needs of your sponsored child and his or her family too. Your monthly contributions are going toward urgent needs, things like food, clean water, hygiene kits, housing, medical care, and trauma counseling. Together with your support, we remain committed to releasing children from poverty in the name of Jesus. Okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to read to you the passage that we're thinking about this morning, and then we're going to uh, sing another song just to give you a chance to stretch your legs before I come and talk to you for an hour and a half. Is that all right, Imani? <laughs> yeah, she said, yes, that's okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, but yeah, so I'm going to read this and then we will sing again. And then I'm just going to come and share some thoughts with you. Not for an hour and a half. Don't worry. So I'm reading Isaiah chapter 58. Um, I'm going to read it from the New Century version, which is different to the version in the, in the, um, in, in the pews, in the chairs there, just because I like the way that it says it. Sometimes it's, you know, we look at different versions. I mean, the meaning is the same, but sometimes just the different phrases that it uses, um, you know, you read something and you think, actually, yes, I find that, that really sort of says it the way I want to say it. So I'm reading Isaiah chapter 58 from the New Century Version. The Lord says, shout out loud, don't hold back. Shout out loud like a trumpet. Tell my people what they have done against their God. Tell the family of Jacob about their sins. They still come every day looking for me and want to learn my ways. They act just like a nation that does what is right, that obeys the commands of its God. They ask me to judge them fairly. They want God to be near them. They say, to honor you, we had special days when we fasted, but you didn't see. We humbled ourselves to honor you, but you didn't notice. But the Lord says, you do, <clears throat> you do what pleases yourselves on these special days, and you are unfair to your workers. On these special days when you fast, you argue and fight and hit each other with your fists. You cannot do these things as you do now and believe that your prayers are heard in heaven. This kind of special day is not what I want. This is not the way I want people to be sorry for what they've done. I don't want people to just bow their heads like a plant and wear rough cloth and lie in ashes to show their sadness. This is what you do on your special days when you fast. But do you think that this is what the Lord wants? I will tell you the kind of fast I want. Free the people you have put in prison unfairly and undo their chains. Free those to whom you are unfair and stop their hard labor. Share your food with the hungry and bring poor homeless people into your own homes. When you see someone who has no clothes, give him yours and don't refuse to help your own relatives. Then your light will shine like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your God will walk before you and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then you will call out and the Lord will answer. You will cry out and he will say, here I am. If you stop making trouble for others, if you stop using cruel words and pointing your finger at others, if you feed those who are hungry and take care of the needs of those who are troubled, then your light will shine in the darkness and you will be bright like sunshine at noon. 
The Lord will always lead you. He will satisfy your needs in dry lands and give strength to your bones. You will be like a garden that has much water, as like a spring that never runs dry. Your people will rebuild the old cities that are now in ruins. You will rebuild their foundations. You will be known for repairing the broken places and for rebuilding the roads and houses. You must obey God's law about the Sabbath and not do what pleases yourselves on that holy day. You should call the Sabbath a joyful day and honour it as the Lord's holy day. You should honour it by not doing whatever you please, nor saying whatever you please on that day. Then you will find joy in the Lord, and I will carry you to the high places above the earth. I will let you eat the crops of the land your ancestor Jacob had. The Lord had said these things. Thank you, Scott. Sing. Thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand, with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. His love endures forever. That's been reborn. His love endures forever. Oh, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever, God is faithful. Forever, God is strong. Grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever, God is faithful. Forever, God is strong. Amen. Scott. Right. Now, I did have some things I was going to get the children to come and help me with, but I think um, we've, uh, we'll do without that because the children have disappeared. <laughs> That's fine. We've got the, the things up on the, on the PowerPoint so you can see that um, anyway. So, uh, so we, we read Isaiah 58. Um, and we're going to come back to that in a moment. But first of all, I just want to ask you, if you were creating yourself an email address, and probably most of you have got an email address, you know, what, what would you call yourself? You know, how would you, what address might you have? Um, I've got, just to get you sort of thinking, I've got, I looked through our, um, our contacts moment. Oh. 
a new version. No, thank you. Not right now. <laughs> so I looked through, through my contact list at some of the email addresses we've got on our list, and, and these were a few that I found that I thought you might. One of our friends calls herself Normal Granny. I'm not sure what the abnormal granny's like, but she's Normal Granny. Um, somebody else, Acoustic Explorer. He's somebody who works in sound and vision. Uh, sound man. Ruth.zoo, she works in a zoo. Curly Angel, it's a friend of ours who has very curly hair. Romans 6.23, I think that's somebody who wants to get a message out. If you don't know what that is, have a look, look it up. They were some of, they're some of our friends and contacts that we've got um, in our contact list. Uh, and then these are a few others that I found, sort of searching online for sort of interesting ones. Singing in the rain at showermail.com. Oh, that was a nice one. How about um, studying again at studentmail.com? I can't read that one for you. Oh, it's bad, bad soundtrack at Music Mail. Somebody, uh, somebody who's obviously not, uh, not so good with the sound. And um, screaming at silentmail.com. Then maybe some of the parents might, uh, might, might uh, uh, associate with that one. So we're just you know, thinking, how might we describe ourselves if we were thinking of a, an email address? And thinking about all of us here today, collectively, we could, you know, thinking we are all part of the world, we're all citizens of the world, we could collectively give ourselves the email address, me at the world.com. Okay, me at the world.com. That covers all of us. But uh, just thinking a bit more about that, about what that dot com might stand for. Me at the world dot com. But the dot com, it could be dot comfortable. Could we be comfortable? You know, when we're comfortable, we don't want to move, do we? You know, I know when I'm sat there in my chair, nice cozy chair at home, all, you know, comfy, maybe with a blanket over me, perhaps a cat, you know, nice and comfy. You don't want to move, do you? You don't want to, you don't want to move. You get comfortable. You're happy, perhaps, and content, and you just don't want to move. The people that Isaiah was talking to, that God had given him the message for in that, uh, well, in the whole of Isaiah, but we read, obviously, chapter 58. They were comfortable. You know, they were thinking, life's okay, life's good, I'm happy, I'm comfortable, I'm contented. But they were looking only at themselves and their own lives. They weren't looking at the people just around them, some of them perhaps very close to them, whose lives weren't comfortable, who were struggling, who were needing help, who were in difficult circumstances. And it can be easy for us, perhaps especially here in Guernsey, where, you know, life is relatively comfortable. Certainly we look at how, how free we are in, in our daily lives compared to even just across the water in Jersey, never mind in the UK, where there's still restrictions and, uh, and things that you can and can't do. And it can be easy for us perhaps to become a bit insulated and a bit comfortable. But even within Guernsey, you know, we can look around us and there are people who are struggling, people for whom life is not easy, people who are finding it hard maybe just to put food on the table every day, people who are finding it hard to get up in the morning and just to live a daily life. And even more so as we look further around the world people who are really, really finding life hard. And maybe even, you know, for the youngsters, sort of thinking about at school, you might think, well, I'm okay, but actually there's somebody who's really struggling in your class or somebody who's finding life really hard. Maybe they're being bullied or there's things going on in their lives and the things are really hard. And it can be easy for us to feel very comfortable or there's another word we could use, it's even complacent. You know, we're, we're okay. I'm all right, Jack. I'm okay. And if we're not careful, just being comfortable can actually lead to the next one, which is complicit. Which means that, uh, that you're actually a partner in crime, that you're actually um, not just, not just uh, ignoring what's going on around, but actually you're 
uh, you're, you're encouraging it, you're supporting it. Maybe because it actually benefits you. You know, Isaiah's workers, Isaiah's listeners were treating their workers badly. You know, we heard in, the, in that verse, they were, they were being unfair to their workers. They, were, they weren't doing things right. They, oh, I've got up there, look, I'm ch- in verses 3 and 4, the Lord says, you do what, your, what pleases yourselves on these special days, and you're unfair to your workers. You know, when, when you should be fasting, you're arguing and fighting. But they were not being fair to those around them. So it wasn't just that they were ignoring the plight of the people around them and what it was like for others, but they were actually making it worse. And, you know, you might think, well, I'm not like that. That's not me. But maybe think about what we do, how we live our lives. Maybe think about the way that we spend our money. You know, do you think about buying fair trade instead of maybe the the cheaper version? You know, when you're buying fair trade, you're helping to support people, make sure they get a good wage for the things that they've produced. You know, a lot of the clothes has been quite a bit recently in the, in the news about clothes factories and the, 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 the awful treatment of workers, again, even in the UK, but certainly in other places around the world. You know, a lot of the clothes that we wear are produced by people who are working and living in terrible conditions. And, you know, we buy these things because having cheap food, cheap clothes, that's good for us. And we like it and we enjoy it. But actually, when we think about it, maybe our actions are actually complicit in the systems that are unfair. You know, going back, thinking about people at school or it could be at work who are perhaps being bullied or unfairly treated. Do we just keep quiet or do we speak up? You know, by just keeping quiet, then are we actually being complicit in their unfair treatment when we could perhaps speak up and help. Maybe we think, well, if it wasn't them that was getting badly treated, it might be me, so I'll just keep quiet because if I, you know, raise my head above the parapet, then I might end up coming off worse. It might turn out badly for me. Another possibility of me at theworld.com is me at the world of commerce, and of course, commerce is all about trade, about making money. And there's nothing wrong with making money. But if that's your motive for life, then life becomes very self-centered, doesn't it? It's all about me. It's all about what I can get out, for, out of something. And there are certainly people who, who give very generously to charities because it makes them look good. Or they do things because it, it reflects well on them. Instead of thinking, what does somebody need or what's the right thing to do they think well what you know what's going to make me look good what can I get out of it we need to check our motives the next word I've got up here is commiserate me at the world dot commiserate some people are very good at showing sympathy aren't they very good at saying oh that's really awful and I feel really sorry for you But it's all words and it doesn't actually lead to any action. In the book of James, a little book right at the end, near the end of the Bible, um, he writes uh, in James chapter 2, verses 14 to 18. Actually, I'm going to read it from the, the New Century Version again, which is the one that's up there. It says, My brothers and sisters, if people say they have faith but do nothing, their faith is worth nothing. Can faith like that save them? A brother or sister in Christ might need clothes or food. If you say to that person, God be with you, I hope you stay warm and get plenty to eat. But you do not give what that person needs. Your words are worth nothing. In the same way, faith by itself that does nothing is dead. Someone might say, you have faith, but I have deeds. Show me your faith without doing anything, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You know, we can watch, perhaps we watch the news on the television and we see Um, dreadful situations around the world. Maybe even people close to home that we know about. And we can feel sorry for them. But if we don't do anything, then that's actually not helping very much at all. Just commiseration on its own is not going to help. But what we need is compassion. Me at the world dot compassion. And we're thinking about the organization compassion today, but it's not just about the organization, but about that word compassion. 
The dictionary describes compassion as a strong feeling of sympathy and sadness for the suffering or bad luck of others and a wish to help them. And that's the difference. It's not just feeling sorry for them, for somebody. It's not just uh, feeling sympathy for them, but it's actually then wanting to do something about it. As James wrote in his book, in his, in his passage, it's about not just saying, oh, I hope, you know, go well and have a good lunch when you know that actually that person's got an empty cupboard at home and won't get any lunch, but it's about doing something. It may be about giving, it may be about giving money, but that's not the only way that we can do that. You know, we can pray. Sometimes we think that praying is just sort of what you do when you can't do anything else. But prayer is powerful. And prayer is a powerful thing that we can do for others. We can perhaps write letters. We can, uh, you know, if there's an issue that we see, an injustice, we can perhaps take some action in in writing letters or signing um, petitions and that sort of thing that might help to change things. Maybe we can think about changing our shopping habits. Maybe think about what we're buying or where we're buying things from. We can help to make those needs known to other people, maybe. Now, if it's obviously a personal, private thing, then we don't go sharing that about everybody. But, you know, if it's general needs that you hear of a need in a certain place, a certain area, then maybe by telling others about that together, that can help to get that need met by sharing that news with other people. Maybe it's speaking up for someone. You know, somebody that we've sort of mentioned, somebody maybe who's suffering an injustice or having a, you know, being, being bullied or having a difficult time, maybe they just need someone who will actually speak up for them. I don't know if you remember back when we did the fruitfulness on the front line and there were six M's that we looked at as things that we as, as Christians can do in our lives to, to, uh, to, to show God's love to the people around us. And one of those is about being a mouthpiece of truth and justice. You know, being a mouthpiece for truth and justice. And that's one of the things that we can do. We can speak up. Now, often, doing those things take us out of our comfort zone. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't do them. Isaiah's message from God to Israel urged them to take action. In uh, Isaiah 58, again, at verse, beginning at verse 6, he says, I will tell, this is God speaking to the people, he says, I'll tell you the kind of fast that I want. Free the people you have put in prison unfairly and undo their chains. Free those to whom you are unfair and stop their hard labor. Share your food with the hungry and bring poor homeless people into your own homes. When you see someone who has no clothes, give him yours and don't refuse to help your own relatives. But this is not just about trying to be good. It's not just about doing the right thing. But it's actually even more than that. It's about following the example of Jesus. It's about being like Jesus. We read many, many times in the Bible, in the Old Testament and the New, about how God and how Jesus were filled with compassion. That one phrase, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. That occurs Uh, at least seven times in the Old Testament, that exact phrase. It's something that people repeated as a reminder that God is compassionate. And in the life of Jesus, there are many times we read that he saw people and he had compassion on them. There's one one example there in Matthew chapter 9, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And when Jesus saw people and had compassion, then he did something about it. Sometimes we read that he then went on to heal them. He he dealt with their practical needs, and he healed them. Other times we read that he had compassion, and he taught them. He spoke to them, and he taught them. You know, we, we thought last week, we were thinking about Jesus being the king of our heart, and about our character being like that of Jesus. One of the attributes of God, attributes of Jesus, is compassion. So that should be something that each and every one of us should seek to have in our hearts, compassion. And as we saw, Jesus' compassion led to action. And ultimately, it led him to the cross. Because Jesus knew that unless he went to the cross, unless he died and rose again for us, 
that we were all lost, that there was nothing that we could do to repair our relationship with Jesus and and with God unless Jesus went to the cross for us. So his compassion definitely took him out of his comfort zone. It cost him, but he did it because he loves us. So our compassion should lead to action, practical things, doing, helping, giving, but also spiritually, because Jesus didn't just heal, but he also taught people and he showed them what they needed to do in order to be right with God, in order to live their lives right. And of course, people need food, they need the basics of life, but also they need to know Jesus. Because unless they know Jesus, then when they finish this life, they will not spend eternity with him in heaven. So it has to be both. We have to care for people practically, but also we have to care for people spiritually. So what can we do? What can we do? Well, we've all done things today. Some of us have brought food, which will go to our food bank, which goes to people uh, who need a bit of extra support. And that includes any of you. If you're in a position and you need something or someone you know needs some, just a bit of extra help, then do come in complete confidence um, uh, to, uh, to us and we can help you from our food bank. And uh, Margaret and, uh, and Lynn are the people who, do you want to just wave your hands in the air? Lynn and Margaret, they're the two who administer that. So just go and have a word with either of them in complete confidence. Um, and uh, it's there. We don't just collect it in, we need to give it out as well. So if you need, know of anyone who needs that, do come and ask. So with, we, you know, we need to do things locally, but also for those further afield. And we've, we're thinking about compassion, obviously, today. And we're going to take up a, an offering for compassion for their um, appeal, particularly for this time of COVID, um, towards the end uh, of the service. So there's things that we can all do, but it's not just about today. It's about a lifestyle. It's about choices. So there's things, you know, maybe you can change something. Maybe there's something that you're feeling prompted to do in your life just to show more compassion in a different way. You know, there's just a few ideas up there, but, but, but there, there may be something else that you, you, you know, think that you can do. But just some suggestions, you know, thinking about what you buy. Maybe, you know, there's one or two items that you can say, well, I'll swap that for fair trade. You know, and instead of buying the cheap version, I'll just pay a little bit more and I'll, I'll buy the fair trade version of that. Or maybe, you know, you, again, clothes and things like that. Maybe think about where they come from. You know, a lot of these organizations rely uh, on regular committed giving. And there's a lot of organizations that, you know, that you could support regularly. It doesn't have to be big amounts. It can be just a small amount, but the fact that it's coming every month is a real encouragement and support for these organizations. Obviously, there's compassion. And uh, um, I believe there are a couple of child's details at the back uh, still waiting for sponsors, and Martin would be delighted to talk to you about that if you would like to sponsor a child uh, with a, a monthly amount, regular amount. You know, we have Barima and Susanna, our missionaries in Burkina Faso, <clears throat> who they train people for church planting, but they also do very practical uh, outreach. They do medical work. They, they have uh, uh, classes for the children. They teach practical skills to people so that they can support themselves and earn a living. They do both. They teach the gospel of Jesus and they do practical help. Again, Reach Beyond that Mick and I used to work for, their tagline is the voice and hands of Jesus. And again, they focus very much on both being the voice of Jesus in proclaiming the gospel, but also the hands of Jesus in practical ways, providing for people's needs. Tear Fund is another one that you, organization you may have heard of, an excellent Christian organization, an aid organization, but with a spiritual message. So there's lots of opportunities. Go and have a look at the board at the back over there. There's all sorts of information. There's the, the House of Hope that, um, that Sue, uh, Sue Williams uh, runs in Kenya that look after children, give a home to, to children who would otherwise be on the street or in very difficult circumstances. Again, I'm sure Sue would be delighted uh, to, to show you how you could help and support in that. 
We can make ongoing donations to the Lord's Larder. There's always baskets at the back, underneath the table at the back. Um, any week when you come, just pop in your donations in there and they will go into the cupboard. Or maybe getting involved in a local project that's helping vulnerable people, Guernsey Welfare, do all sorts of things. There's the caring for ex-offenders who mentor and support ex-offenders as they, uh, to enable them to, to rebuild their lives. Both Christian organizations working in the name of Jesus. We can do things, you know, we're, we're in the middle of an election, aren't we? Who's voted? Anybody? Yes, I've posted mine. So, you know, we can get involved in local issues and local politics. If you haven't voted yet, make sure you do if you're registered to vote. And choose those people who you believe are going to do the godly thing, the right thing. You know, and when issues come up, that are relevant to us, that we feel that we need to, to ha- a voice of compassion needs to be heard, then, you know, then write, make, make your views known. And we can pray, but informed prayer, you know, really praying. All of those organizations we've mentioned and, and many others, they, they usually put out regular prayer information to enable you to pray, pray with, with, uh, w- with real insight and knowledge into things. So get yourself signed up to receiving prayer information and pray. Prayer is a vital part of what we do. There's lots of things we can do. But I want us to today when we go home, not just to see, sit here and think, well, yes, perhaps I should do something and then go home and forget about it. So I've got a little card that when you, as you go today, I'm going to give you all a little card that you can slip and in your wallet. And on the front, it's got, you can write your name. So we've got at the world.com. So we can put Heather at the world.com. And just a little thing that says, I promise to show compassion by. And I just want to encourage you to just to write something on there. It's only for you. Nobody else will see it. But just what do you feel that God is calling you to do to show compassion? Is there something that you're already doing or is he asking you to do something different, something new? Because when we write things down, when we think about it, we're more likely to do it. So I just want to encourage you to use that. And on the back, this part of the verse from Isaiah that we've looked at today. So I'm going to finish in a moment. But I just want to read a few verses from Isaiah 58 just to close, it says, give your food to the hungry and care for the homeless, and then your light will shine in the dark, and the Lord will always guide you. When we act compassionately, then Jesus' light, the light of Jesus shines through us. And we're not only blessing others, but we will be blessed ourselves. We're going to listen to that chapter from Isaiah in a paraphrased version. That means that it's somebody's own words. Um, They've they've put it in their own words. And Tom and Harry are going to come and read that for us. Thank you, Tom. Harry, come up. Harry, that mic's not working. I'm sorry. Can you start again, but do it with that one? (laughs) There we go. Just start again. That's great. Thank you. Are you keen to worship? Are you keen to learn about God? Do you want to do the right thing? Do you enjoy God's love? Well, get this one thing straight. God won't enjoy your worship. God won't be interested in your prayers. If you're only thinking about yourselves and about what a good time you're having, all your singing and all your praying, all your services and all your praises, even your finest harvest thanksgiving is empty of meaning if you don't care for the poor. So, help those who are being unjustly treated. Share your food with those who are hungry. Open your homes to those who are in need of shelter. Lend out your goods to those who have fallen on hard times. This is the way to shine with God's light. This is the way to earn God's well done. 
This is the way you will grow in your faith. This is the way you will discover God's presence. And this is the way God's love will flow like water from your life into the desert of the world. This is the way to know the Lord. This is the way to experience God's blessing. This is the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Hmm. We're going to watch the last of our little videos now, which um, is looking specifically at how Compassion are using their, the money from their, their appeal, which we're, once we've watched this, we'll send the baskets round, and, uh, and if you have anything you'd like to put in. We, do, we, we did say last week, we do recognize that it's only a couple of weeks since we had a gift day, um, and we know you gave very generously to that. So don't feel bad if you don't put anything in, okay? There's no pressure. Um, but if you would like to give something, just pop your envelope in the basket uh, as it comes round in a few minutes. But we'll, first of all, we'll watch this little video. Thank you. Dear COVID-19 They say you are erasing 30 years of global poverty development And you won't stop Education enrollment in Kenya had never been higher And now every school is closed Girls in Peru were hopeful about their future And now for many their focus is on where they will sleep tonight. Child malnutrition rates in Burkina Faso had once halved. And now, so many children face hunger once more. All around the world, you are stealing hope and replacing it with despair. And still, you won't stop. But neither will we. Hear us again, COVID-19. We will rise as one. As one. We will love like Christ. We will bring food to the hungry. We will pay rent for those losing stability. And we won't stop. We won't stop. We won't stop. We will serve their needs for hygiene, sanitation, and health. We will find new ways of delivering education. And still, we will not stop. For we are the church. We are a steady, unwavering expression of Christ's love. And we will rise as one. As one. Como uno. Como uno. Como uno. As one. As one. As one. Okay, so I'm just going to ask Alan and um, you're pointing, Alan and Maria. Just going to pass the baskets round, and um, and you can pop your envelope in, and then we will pray for those gifts, and then we will sing a final song before we close. <laughs> it's gone. Thank you. Let's just uh, let's just pray before we sing together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we have so many blessings here. And Lord, we thank you for the work that is going on, the work that Compassion are doing around the world. And Lord, we just pray that you'll bless this gift and that it will help to, to support many that are in need. 
Lord, I pray that you will bless the, not, not only the money gifts, but also the gifts of food that we've brought today. And again, just pray that many people will be blessed through that and that your love will shine through these gifts. Amen. Let's sing. compassion love that's never failing let mercy fall on me everyone needs forgiveness kindness of a savior you find me all my fears and failures fulfill my life again I give my life to follow everything I believe in now I surrender give to the love of God Savior he can move the Shine your light and let the whole world sing. We sing it for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world sing. We sing it for the glory of the risen King. Shine your light, oh God. Shine your light and let the whole world sing. Yes, we sing it for the glory. Of the risen King, Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. Sing it for the glory of the risen King. Amen. I must just say, I forgot to say earlier, big thank you to Hannah and the youth who've decorated the church for today. Doesn't it look lovely? Look, when you've walked in there, it's just really look brilliant. Thank you very much. And um, do remember that we are meeting again tonight at half past six for a time of, uh, of worship and praise together. Do come and join us for that. And um, we'll see you later. Go and grab a cup of tea, coffee, have a chat and um, have a good Sunday.